we know that current is a flow of electron but conventional the direction of conventional current is in the opposite direction that the electron flows so if electron flows in this direction the conventional currents currents direction is this one so instead of flow of electron i will just talk about charge because every uh, each electron has a charge of 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and according to number of electron the total charge will be like if there is n electrons the charge will be n times q provided q is the charge of one electron so instead of going into the sign or direction i will just say charge flow of charge now when we define current current is something flow of charge through the conductor per unit in the amount of uh, charge that is flown through uh, a cross section of the conductor per unit time that means if this is the current I, the value of I will be the total number of charged that is passed through this one per unit of uh, time. That means Q over T. So if the number of uh, particle, in actually electron, but we are not considering the direction. So number of particle is N, the total charge will be M times Q, where Q is the charge, just the value, charge of one electron over time is the value of i in amps so that is current now when we say the same uh, current that is going through a conductor when we define a uh, voltage in order to for the charge to flow through the conductor a certain amount of work needs to be done so the def de definition of voltage is if the voltage here is va and voltage here is vb the definition of voltage difference is the amount of work that needs to be done to flow a unit charge through the conductor so if we want to pass a unit charge through from va to vb the amount of work that needs to be done is vap so that is the definition of voltage so we have now definition of voltage we have definition of current so instead of VAB, I'm just writing I. Now for the same conductor, we are talk we are always taking the same conductor, same shape, same thing. So when same conductor, it actually possesses an, an opposition. It uh, it actually gives an opposition to the flow of current, and that is called resistance. It's a property of the material, and depending on what material it is, it varies. So copper is a very good conductor. That means it has less resistance. It is less resistive towards the flow of current so that property is given by rho which is the resistivity it depends on the property and then when we say resistance of a certain length of conductor the length can be l so l is one another property of the that it's a dimensional property of that particular conductor we are talking about and then there is cross-sectional area so that one that is a so the resistance when the property material property is rho the length of the certain conductor is L and the cross section is A. The resistance is given by rho L A. And we can see that the longer the wire, the more resistance and the cross section, the bigger cross section, the less resistance. That makes sense because uh, it's all about number of fl flow of number of electrons and uh, less current means less number of uh, charge is flown because uh, the more resistivity and so on so now i will show, quickly talk about ohm's law which is a, which is very vital so that says through any so when we say resistance we actually in circuit we don't uh, write uh, draw it in circuit like that we draw a symbol which is r which is resistance is like that so this means resistance uh, of a certain conductor that, or a certain conductor that provides a certain value of resistance which is given by uh, ohms that's the unit of resistance so when we say resistance of a certain conductor let's say the current through a certain conductor and the voltage difference from this point to this point is V when I say conductor I also mean resistance is conductor because it actually allows current to conduct but it's a resistance because it pos also possesses certain uh, Re, uh, resistance towards the flow because if there was no resistance current would be infinite the there would be uh, infinite amount of charge so that wouldn't happen and we will see why that would happen the charge will be infinite so basically the property is the the ohm's law is the current through a conductor is proportional to the 
voltage across it. So V is proportional to I and the proportionality constant is the resistance of the conductor. That means V is equal to R I and that is the Ohm's law that is the very fundamental law and the first law basically for, for electrical circuit and from here we can see that when if we say R is uh, let's say I is equal to V over R because I is the current that will occur depending on the voltage that is the amount of uh, uh, voltage is applied so the amount of work done we are assuming and we are applying a, a voltage source or a battery we are connecting a battery to uh, let an amount of current flow so if the resistance is zero the current will become infinite because r is zero and that is given by ohm's law and that actually happens if we uh, if the resistivity is very low we can burn out the wire so there is a there is a way to remember the formula it's a triangle thing v i and r we like uh, write like that so this means that when i is equal to v over r or if we want to write r r is v over i or if we want to in terms of v if we want to write in terms of v v is equal to i times r so the same thing just uh, different ways of writing so that's ohm's law